All right, we're gonna have ourselves a good old fashioned bug burning today. These sawmill offcuts are infested with flat headed fir borers. Those are the bugs that kill these Douglas fir trees. It's getting close to the time of the year where those bugs are gonna emerge from the bark. They'll start flying around, feed on fir needles for the next few months. Then in the late summer, they'll lay their eggs in live fir trees where the larva will crawl inside, actually bore inside and kill the trees. We're gonna turn these bugs into genetic dead ends. We're gonna fry them, boil them, torrify them, grill them, char them. We're gonna turn them into biochar. Before we do that, we need to light them first. To do that, I'm gonna climb up this pile and light it on the top. I'll tell you why in a minute. We're just using a match and kindling today. I'm sure some people are gonna comment they use old tires and five gallons of diesel to get theirs started, but we're not doing that today. Who would you rather be stranded in the wilderness with? Someone who uses old tires and five gallons of diesel to get their fires started, or someone who's built thousands of fires with just match and kindling, does it on a regular basis. Why am I lighting this from the top instead of the bottom? Mostly just to irritate those who are gonna tell me that I don't know what I'm doing and I need to light it on the bottom, not the top, because everyone knows heat rises. Those who live in the dark ages who don't know that heat actually radiates in all directions. And they don't know the difference between radiant heat and convective heat. Hopefully they'll do a quick Google search and look that up before they decide to argue with me save themselves the embarrassment from publicly declaring something and then finding out they were wrong. One of the advantages of top lighting is you get less smoke. Also, if you wanna make biochar, it retains more this way. Disadvantages is it's way up there, a little harder to throw fuel on. We'll put some of this dry stuff up here to get a hot fire going so it will burn down, which fire does, it burns down. Sometimes it will burn up better because of convective heat, but it'll do just fine this way. This is a flat spot I've been digging out of the hillside. I was thinking this would be a good place to put the sawmill. It doesn't have the view that it has down below, but there's a lot more room. Room for that, room to park things, room to turn things around. I expanded it a lot last fall, but then I got busy harvesting these bug killed trees. Then the fall rains came and it got too muddy, but now it's starting to dry out. It has some springy spots that are still wet. After it's done, I'll have to ditch this cut bank to drain the water off. Then to figure out what I want to do with this big water tank. It's all steel, 3,000 gallons. It's thick walled steel, doesn't have a top on it. I haven't decided what I want to do with this thing yet. I have this fire on what's probably gonna be the hottest day of the year so far. We're having a little bit of a heat wave in April, really hot next to this fire, but I can feel cool spots on the top of my feet right behind my toes because I'm wearing my Merino wool Camel City Mill socks. They have a heat venting system right behind the toes. I can feel it working. So far, these are my favorite socks. I'll put a link to those in the description in case you want comfortable feet too. Now that these are mostly burned down to coals, you could extinguish these coals and use them for biochar. One way to do that would be to take a water hose and hose it down. A lot of people claim that biochar has miraculous soil building qualities. It's good in the garden. 
Although some say the stuff from a fire like this isn't the same because it doesn't get as hot as stuff you would make in a kiln. But I think when it comes to biochar, there's a lot of hippie science instead of real science, and it's hard to know what's real. I think a lot of people are emotionally attached to the idea because of its possible carbon sequestration, which makes them susceptible to hippie science. Since I'm not actually going to use these for biochar, I have another tool over here I'm going to use to extinguish this.
the ground's still a little too muddy for digging as much as I want to. But we got the fire out and I got a little low spot here. So maybe the water will drain out of here, dry up faster. But the fire that was right here is just gone. That char will last for hundreds of thousands of years. So I'm just using it as landfill. If it was in the form of wood, it would rot. And then you have a sinkhole. The charcoal lasts longer than any of us will. Now that the flat-headed fur borer apocalypse has happened, the bugs are gone, the wood's gone, it's all been buried, I guess we're done for the day. I could leave you with an inspirational quote. Actually, this is probably not a quote. It's probably more of a misquote of something I once heard. Don't just shoot for the moon, shoot for the stars. Because if you just shoot for the moon and you miss, you might end up landing in the mud. But if you shoot for the stars and you miss, you might actually make it to the moon. Which reminds me of a saying, be careful what you ask for. If you land on the moon, you might quickly realize, this place sucks. It's cold, there's no internet, cell service is lousy, there's nothing to eat, there's no air to breathe. You are probably better off just landing in the mud on Earth. At least on Earth, we have things like hoses, showers, towels. If you land in the mud, all you have to do is clean the mud off. No problem. So what's the point of all this? Next time you hear somebody say something like, I'm going to leave you with an inspirational quote. Beware. There's a good chance it could be just a bunch of nonsense. And don't forget, check out those Camel City Mill socks. I'll put a link down below.